Well, we'll hear from Armand about this beer first. Hello, everybody. Thanks that we can come to Philadelphia in this beautiful area. I was here two years ago with the memorial of Michael Jackson. That was a very beautiful moment. I met Michael Jackson different times, and Michael was one of the guys who just said that we are stupid Belgians because we didn't know whether the union deal we had and that we proved. And he started writing about it and started writing about it all over the world because he was, he was the man who just made something like a small revolution in the world. For me, to remember this very important man in history of beer, I'm very proud to start with my girls. The history is that in 98, everybody was talking about millennium, millennium, millennium. <laughs> and the champagne makers, so in France, they were making millennium champagne. And a good friend of mine, and partly owner of the brewery, Willem van Erwe, he was at that moment also Brandon, president of Curse de Camp. Willem is also the head brewer of Palm Brewers. And we were just talking about it, and it was born me that always Millennium Champagne. But we have maybe one of the most exceptional beers in the world, and sometimes they call it Champagne of the beers. I don't like this word, but they use it. We're making beer, not Champagne. So the thing is that we were saying, we will do that as well. So we went to the idea we will make, create a very special bottle. There was a decoration on that bottle. Oh, the goes of Millennium, Nine, so it was bottled in 98. So because there was a beautiful bottle and everybody made, without one single euro of publicity, we had in total 8,000 bottles and in a few weeks they were sold out. We sold them for what we thought a good price. <laughs> it's, uh, if you have one now, they're very expensive. Um, and then the idea came, that was a success. It was a blend between the camp and the Fontaine. And I had the opportunity to make my blend at the camp and Willem van Erwege at my place. So uh, we had a very beautiful course with that. And thanks to that success, we thought maybe we can do the same thing. So if you they were presented, 99 is a very beautiful bottle. I didn't know we, won't be, we could start with that 99 because it's one of my best cures I've ever had. And uh, you know, or maybe you don't know, but a blend is not always the same. It's very difficult to make a similar beer. And uh, this is uh, for me one of my grand, my grand plus. This bottle has okay. been bottled in '99. It's a blend of Bourgogne, Midimans, and Girardin. And I think I can remember that the oldest one was Girardin. Uh, maybe I can say a few words about myself. Um, I am grown up between bottles and barrels. As long as I can remember, I say beer. We were not allowed at home for drinking any cola or lemonades. We always drink beer. And my children, maybe John is the same. A little bit beer and a lot of water, of water, of course. But that makes that we all grew up with that taste. That's also what you will see in wine families. Mostly the children are allowed to drink just a little bit of wine. And that's for me so common and so normal. We were blenders because we started to blend the Drie Fontaine 53. My father took it over for existing cafe blender and um, we still continue it, always. And the most important reason why we continue to make the girls was my father took this beer for his health because he's of the, one of the generation who has been damaged by the world war, has been in the camps, prisoner, and had a, always his life a lot of uh, digestive problems. So when he was coming in from the farm into the Drifontaine, it was my guy who said, stop all your medicine, threw them away, and drink one goose with me. And so he was slowly started coming in. And we were very lucky that it was the blender of Brauerei van Halen who learned my father blending. Because blending means that it is experience, it's not a science, be sure about that. And like my father often uh, teach me, the guy who knows is not born yet, I still believe that. So we know a lot about beer more than years ago, but it's still a mystery. And sometimes you can say, 
this will be my most beautiful blend and at the end the girls will not be what you expected and sometimes you say and now and it's a surprise that's my world so in that way uh, it's always exciting I'm growing up with girls I'm blending that now for so long time let's say I'm doing that now on my own from something like 80, 81 that I'm blending myself so my father didn't help me anymore uh, it just gave me a lot of critics always and uh, it takes me a long time before he said that my blend was very good he called my blend with 50% of Rifantaina and 50% of Chirana a very good girls so wow the first time in my life that my father gave me a compliment <laughs> But at the same time, he was a very experienced man who just loved that beer and did a lot of It's hard working, it's a tough job compared to any other breweries or styles. Uh, we work in maybe more than others. And with all respect for all the beers, I don't make a difference in that. And I believe that all the craft brewers, they have the same passion as me or as Jean or as Frank. But we have to do a lot of physical work, certainly by cleaning all those barrels. That's a, it's not so easy and by doing a lot of not sure and the most thing, exciting thing in one way and the most special thing in our profession we need time a lot of time and a big stock for a low production that's costs if you know that maybe John can say but I have something like at the moment uh, I think it's uh, 170,000 liters total stock I'm just one man brewery. But the thing is that we have we're still working like a blender now and we can maybe explain a little on later on what's going on. The beers are so unique and to be here is as well unique for us. And if you understand that this is the first time that we are on a panel, John, me, and Frank, uh, thank you <laughs> Daniel to invite us when I'm seeing so the number of people just coming for the girls. I say, it's a unique event. You're really lucky guys that there is such a beautiful initiative and that this may be a style of beer event which is a world premiere. And that's also unique. I'm really a little, little bit surprised seeing what's going on. And that's belief, that gives us the courage to continue because it's very hard to continue because it's, this is really very expensive to produce. In Belgium it's very hard to get a price, get a good price for the beer, like me in all, maybe in all the countries, but this is why this beer could disappear. But seeing what's going on, we have a future again, and I'm believing very hard in the future, certainly after what I had this week in Philadelphia.